Well, welcome to all of you. So grateful to have you here today. Now, yesterday, many of us met over at Black Creek Park, and we did a 5K race. And the whole reason for that was to um, help raise money for a, a home that is in Bangladesh, which is a small country next to India. And we had just a really fantastic day. And um, at this home, there are several young girls whose mothers uh, work in brothels and um, have been uh, given a life of slavery. And uh, so I want to have uh, invite uh, Luke and Sarah Bates up. These are the leaders of Aki's Place, and they are here to be able to share with us today. Would you guys give them a warm Calvary Assembly welcome? <clears throat> well, so grateful to have you guys here. Um, well, first off, so you guys are um, missionaries to Bangladesh, but I guess first, if you could just tell us briefly about your family um, and introduce yourselves and your children. How are you doing this morning? <laughs> my name is Luke, and this is my wife, Sarah. We have four boys. Our oldest son is not with us this morning. He's 14. His name is Levi. And then we have Aaron, who's 12, Joshua, who's 8, and Malachi, who's 4. Wow. So, um, so tell us a little bit about your journey to, to becoming missionaries. Like where, where did that start? How did you um, know you wanted to do that? Did you want to do that? Are you crazy? Um, and, um, you know, and then how did you end up in Bangladesh? Well, sometimes we wonder if we're crazy. I'll leave that up to you guys. So we, my, my wife and I, we felt led to missions when we were teenagers separately and we met at Bible school but you know after Bible school we just kind of did life for a while attended church I worked in construction my wife did odd jobs we had a couple kids you know just normal life and uh, while we were just doing life I felt like God just tapped us on the shoulder and uh, started opening doors for us to go to Bangladesh and share his love and his hope to the, the people there and you know I just want to take this moment to encourage you that you know, while you're doing life, if you feel like God is tapping you on the shoulder and leading you towards something, you know, you guys have awesome pastors here. And just, I encourage you to go talk to them, talk to them about where God is leading you and how, you know, they can help you get there. Yeah, that's great. So, um, so yeah, so you guys are involved in um, several different ministries that you guys are now leading in Bangladesh. Um, tell us how long you have uh, been serving over there, and then why Aki's place? Um, how has God led you there, and, and why? So we've been in Bangladesh for seven years now, which still feels new. <laughs> we're still learning every day. So um, we were, uh, we, when we came to Bangladesh seven years ago, uh, Aki's place was just being birthed. It was just being started. The first girls were coming, and um, we just marveled at the ministry. We knew that it was so important. Um, it was led by some colleagues of ours. Um, and a few years ago, they, um, they, they came to a point where they just couldn't, we could, they couldn't come back to Bangladesh. And so they asked us um, to take over leadership there. And we were just honored to do that. We um, have watched these girls grow. Um, we, we have seven girls there now, and we've seen them grow. And um, we know how they've come in. And to see um, our oldest one, uh, she is 13 years old and she completed some tests last year that are really, really important. There's lots of testing that happens. I don't know if you know in our part of the world, lots of testing, very important testing. Um, and she completed her grade five testing. She was A++, which is the top that you can get. So um, you were seeing, of course, that's educationally, she's doing amazing, but um, also uh, growing in the Lord, she's learning more each day how much God loves her and um, she is, um, yeah, she's wonderful. So that's our oldest and our youngest, our littlest one that came just recently, actually, just a few months ago. Um, I wanted to share a story. You share away. <laughs> We're loving it. I, want, well, I, I wanted to, um, we talked about trying to help you kind of understand these, these our girls and where they came from and what their, um, yeah, the need that they have um, and the wounds that they have. So they're uh, the, our little one. I'm going to call her Holly. That's a very American name, but um, we don't use their names. Uh, but little Holly. Uh, to tell her story, we really have to start with her mom's story. 
Um, her mom, we're going to say Rhoda. Um, Rhoda uh, was born uh, into a pretty happy family um, when she was uh, small. She had a mom and a dad. That's pretty typical in Bangladesh. But her dad passed away tragically. And so that started Rhoda's life kind of down this very hard road. Um, her mom remarried, and she um, then she had a stepfather. And a lot of times in Bangladesh, the stepfather is, he kind of, kind of leaves the kids that were from that previous marriage behind. So that's what happened to Rhoda. Um, she, was, she was taken in by some family members, an aunt and an uncle, but they really, uh, they really just kind of abused and, and exploited her. Um, she was eventually a wage earner and they just took her wages and just didn't really love her. Um, eventually, she had a cousin that was living with them and he started to sexually assault her. Um, and she told, which is, takes a lot of bravery in our, cult, in our context, in any context, but in ours it's uh, so taboo. She, don't, she told and she wasn't believed. So um, that just continued to happen until eventually one day the family was tired of her and they, kind of, they just married her off to a man that was not great. So it's just tragic, like the whole thing, no choices, no options, she just one thing after the next, um, tragedy. Uh, so her husband was um, a drug addict, and he was unfaithful. Um, <coughs> one day, she became pregnant, and her uh, husband decided to also discard Rhoda. So Rhoda um, <clears throat> was found herself alone, pregnant, and with no family. And in Bangladesh, that is, for a woman, it's just hopeless. There's no options. So um, without any choices, she... she uh, met somebody that introduced her to a life of prostitution, and she had to provide for her daughter, so she went, went, went in that direction. That's what became her life. Her daughter, Holly, who we know and love, um, Holly came, uh, began to live that life with her mom, and it's really dark, and it's pretty dangerous, actually. She, um, she yeah, she was there with her mom. A few years later, uh, Rhoda was able to meet one of our national colleagues, our um, Bangladeshi ladies we work with, and uh, Ruth was able to tell Rhoda about Aki's place and about the home that's there and the hope and the stability and just the, the resources that are there in Aki's place. And Rhoda, um, loving her daughter so much, uh, made the really, really difficult decision uh, to give Holly to us to be cared for and to be... Um, to be nurtured for the next, uh, until she's about 20. So now we have Holly in our, in our home, and Holly is uh, changing. You can see her, she came in, she was angry and um, full of uh, angst. <laughs> um, and she's but still there some, you know, that it's a process, but she's also bright and bubbly, and, um, and we're just, we're so blessed to be a part of her life. She's learning to be, um, to have, um, courage and to have strength within herself. She's learning about Jesus, the hope that she has in him. Um, and we, we, our hope, the hope for the girls is that they would not live a life that's marked by the stigma that is behind them. They're not going to live in bondage to that, but they would live in confidence and just with the hope that comes with Jesus and live a life that is full in him. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you can clap for that. <laughs> So I think the work that you guys are doing is, is heavy and hard, and um, I, I just, I'm grateful for you guys and your consistency and just leading this well. How can we uh, partner together with you with, with what it is that God is doing and, and breaking through the darkness with light? How, how can we be a part of that? So first, I just want to say thank you to you guys. Um, you guys are generous givers as a church, and because of that, we can do what we do in Bangladesh, and we can have a hockey space, so I want to say thank you. That is huge. There's another thing that you guys can do is you guys can come. Uh, we have opportunities for you guys if you want to come visit Bangladesh and work there for a little bit of time or a long time. Just talk to Pastor Jonathan, and he'll help you on that path, and then and lastly, we want to highlight just the, um, how v valuable and just vital it is that you pray with us. Um, prayer partners are, they're, they're a no-brainer. We have to have people praying for us here, praying for us, praying for the girls, praying for Bangladesh. 
Um, Bangladesh is a place that lacks hope. There's just, uh, when you come and visit us, you will see uh, it's very evident. There's, not, there's no, no obvious hope there, but um, we know that with Jesus there is hope. And we, I mean, just immense hope. So pray that that hope would break through the darkness, that there would be, um, there would be victories. Yes. Amen. Well, church, I think it'd be appropriate for us to pray for them and pray for the girls at Aki's place. So if you would bow your heads with me, and even if you want to extend a hand forward as if we're laying hands um, on them together, Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for Luke and Sarah and for the four boys, God. And I just want to first just pray um, your hedge of protection over them, Lord Jesus, as um, they travel and um, all that you have called them and equipped them to do. Um, God, I'm I'm also just praying for for their strength, Lord, that that you would be that supernatural strength for them. And and God, that they they would not veer away from the vision that you have given to them, um, but instead, Lord, allow them to walk in that confidence and, and to walk in your favor, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I, I, we lift up together the, the girls at Aki's place, and, and God, we're just so grateful that they have been given a safe home for education and for food and shelter and to learn to know, to love you, Jesus. And, and Lord, I just pray that you would wrap your arms of love just around each and every one of those sweet girls, even this morning, Lord Jesus. Allow them to feel and sense your presence and the plans that you have for them. They are not marked by their past but they have a bright future in you, Lord Jesus. And I just pray that they would see that, that they would have a vision for their lives that matches yours. Allow them to walk step in step, hand in hand, Lord, with what it is that you have for those precious girls. And all who agree with that prayer said amen. 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 Hey, can we give an appreciation clap for Luke and Sarah Bates? We're so thankful, guys.